Okay, one last step before we're uh, done with looking at the SMX control. Once we've programmed in our part, we hit mode to take us back to the main uh, menu here. Uh, we'll go to the setup to enter in the tools that we'll be using in the program. Uh, reference position is everything is set here. And uh, the tool table shows us the tools that we have that we can program in. Uh, in red here, it shows us that the t there are two tools being used for the program in the current memory. Uh, we haven't set a reference tool, so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and press set for now. It's going to ask us what the diameter of our first tool is, and that is our quarter inch drill. So we punch in quarter inch. And at this point, we'd go and touch off. This number would change when we touch off, and we'd hit set to give us our Z offset. And uh, say, for instance, we've drilled the part, milled the part, but we're too shallow or too deep. Well, just so we don't have to go back and touch off again, if you're out by 5 thou, say for instance, I can just go back here to the modifier section, data right, and say, okay, I'm out by 5 thou, I'll just compensate for that right here, boom, put in 5 thou, and your tool will be cutting uh, true again. Data right, this is a tool type, what kind of a tool is it? It's a drill, I'll put one and then set. And this section is just for us so we know what it is that we programmed in. The computer couldn't care less about what kind of a tool type it is. All it worries about is the information that we enter here. Our second tool is a half inch end mill, so we punch in 0.5. Again, uh, if we could touch off, this number would change. We hit set for the Z uh, depth and we don't have to modify it. So we're just gonna go over here and say it's a finishing end mill. Number four, great. We've just entered in the two tools that we'll be using. Hit return. We'll take a look at the tool path here. And this shows us that the, the path that the tool is going to be taking. The other nice thing is also it'll tell us how much machining time it takes to actually complete this part. In this particular instance, it takes us just over five minutes of machining time to complete it. And so I can just press the step button here and hold it down. And it shows me, does the bolt circle there, it goes in, does the pocket, goes around, profile once, twice, and the finishing step, uh, the finishing um, cut, the 10 thou that we left in there. So that is the tool path it'll take. Wonderful. But we have to go and run it now. So hit run, and go to the start position, and I'll just say, show the path for now. And when you're ready, you hit go. Great. All right, so it says, load the first tool in, which is a quarter inch diameter drill. Start the spindle, which we pretend we did, and then press go for CNC run or tracking if we want to be in control of the movement. Now, tracking is something that is unique to the, the track machine, obviously. Uh, unlike other CNC's where you uh, program the part, close the doors, press go, and then cross your fingers and start praying that you've programmed it properly, with the track, it actually gives you complete control over what it is that's happening with the machine. Because with the tracking, it will allow you to control the CNC run. So I hit tracking, I grab one of the hand wheels, and I start to crank it. And as long as I crank the hand wheel, it continues its CNC run. I stop cranking, it stops. I back up the hand wheel, it backs up. So I am in complete control of what the machine is doing right now. Why would I need this? Well, for instance, we saw the programmed tool path that it'll take, but it never shows you things that might get in the way, like, I don't know, a clamp. So if you're just worried that you haven't programmed it properly, you can take control, stop, make sure you're gonna clear the clamp, back off if you want to, and when you're happy, you just hit stop, CNC run, go, and the machine takes over. Well, we just finished the, uh, the uh, drill run here. So what we'll do is we're going into the end mill, and it's doing the pocket for us, doing a great job. But, for instance, I'm getting nervous again, for whatever reason, I'm nervous. So I hit stop, tracking, and now I'm in control again. Okay. I'm happy, I back up if I want to, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, that's me controlling it, 
So the machine's running, it's cutting, and while it's cutting, I'm controlling its movement. Okay, I'm happy again. Great. Stop, CNC run, go, and the machine takes over. So at any point, I can take control or give back control to the machine during the CNC run. And the other thing is the speeds and feeds that are programmed in, if I find that it's going too fast or too slow, what I can do is I can press show ABS. And here I can override uh, the feed or the speed by increasing or decreasing it. I can increase it up to 150% or decrease it down to 10% of what I had programmed in. So whatever it is that's happening during the run, I can take care of. If it's too fast, if it's too slow, if I want to take over, great, no problem. It allows me to do all of these things. And that's what makes this track control that easy to use. And also up here you'll see a countdown timer. And what that means is I have three and a half minutes until the machine will require my attention again. In this particular case, the job will be done after three and a half minutes. But if it's a longer job, it might be three and a half minutes until I have to make a tool change, and which is simple to do because you have an air power draw bar, press one button, tool pops out, press one button, the next tool pops in. Very quick, very easy to do. And that is what sets the ProTrack apart. And that's why it's such a popular machine on the market. Ease of use, anybody can do it. And as you can see, it gives you complete control throughout the whole CNC uh, run.